So we had to order some new teapots for the tea rooms and uh, they arrived earlier this week. And when we were opening one of the boxes, we could hear this rattling sound going on. And then after further inspection, we pulled out a teapot that was, I don't know, maybe eight or nine pieces. It was broken into these eight or nine pieces. And so we went through the rest of the teapots. The rest of the teapots were fine. And we thought, well, that's no good. Let's chuck it out and just sort out a refund. Micah comes in and sees the teapot. Micah's our youngest and says, hey, can I, can I fix it? Can I glue it back together? And me and Lucy were saying, well, there's no point. There's, there's no point in trying to stick that back together. It's too far gone. It's all broken into pieces. He said, well, can I just have a try? And then so he spends some time gluing each bit together. I helped him glue some of it as well. I thought I'd join in. And we managed to put back a teapot. Now you can see some of the cracks as I go through it. But by and large, it is a whole teapot. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about it, I think just even this morning, mate, or maybe yesterday, that this can be a little bit like our lives at times. Like through our lives, we pick up all kinds of damage, things that people say to us, things that people do to us, things and decisions that we make as well, sins that we engage with, then it's like our life slowly gets broken. We get more chips and scars and breaks. And often these can form a big, big part of our life. And like this teapot, we might think to ourselves, well, you know, what use are we anymore? There's, you know, we've picked up so many, bro so much brokenness. How good could we be for anyone else? Is it, you know, is it even worth living when it gets to that kind of extreme place that, you know, there seems to be nothing good in us? Are we just useless and ready to be thrown on the rubbish heap? And I was reminded of this uh, incredible verse found in the second book of Corinthians. Uh, and you'll be familiar with it. And the context is, it's in chapter four, and the context is about the gospel and the power of the gospel. Um, verse four, it talks about uh, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers from keeping them to see, from keeping them seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And goes on to talk about the light shining into the darkness, this light that shone into our hearts through the, the power of this gospel. And then verse seven, it says this, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And I was thinking about this broken teapot and the broken lies, my own broken life, maybe your own broken life. And I was reminded that God can do the most amazing things with our brokenness. And every part of our brokenness and every part of our sin is just a symphony of song to the grace of God. You know, even the crazy wrong choices that we made, that when we came to repentance, when we turned to Jesus, he delivered us from them. That They're just songs of grace that showed that no matter how big our sin and shame was, the power of Jesus and his cross was big enough to break the power of it over our lives. And the Bible goes on a step further again in the book of Corinthians, telling us that we are new creations. The old has gone, the new is here. So that's talking about our nature. So our nature has changed from being sinful to being saint, which is why the Bible then addresses the people in the church as saints and not sinners. Because we've been changed from being sinners into saints because Jesus took our sin. He never sinned, but in effect became a sinner. Not that he sinned, but took on our sin so that we could be right and saved. And so this amazing message of this, this teapot, which has been put back together, is that all of the scars and the brokenness can be used to sing of the greatness and the glory of God. Knowing that even though we may still bear some scars... Our very nature has been changed so that it is new, alive, free from sin and brokenness and shame and, will, and, and promises us an eternal future with God forever. So if that's you today, if you feel like there's just so much junk in your life, there's so much brokenness, you're just full of chipped and broken parts and what good are you? I want you to look up and remind yourself of God's great love for you. 
that each one of those scars can be a song of grace of how God has rescued you and saved you. And know this, that on the inside you have been made new. And as a new creation, that new life can infiltrate every part of your life so that even the scars and the brokenness become songs of joy and worship to a great big God. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Let us walk in his power, not our strength, in his greatness, not ours, in his righteousness, not our sin and shame, knowing that the power belongs to him and that he works through willing vessels like you and me.